Hey guys, I'm Maddie, and this is my story. Who knows if I'm gonna post this video or not? I really don't know, but if it's out, then it means I posted it. Also, don't mind the room, I know it's a mess, but this is my story about how I experienced God and how I got to know Him more, and this will be unedited as well, so there will be no editing in this video. But it all started when I was like 12 years old, maybe 12 or 13. I was 12, 13, or 14 years old. And, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm already messing up, guys. <laughs> um, in junior high, it was July 26th, and I was coming home from school. Right when I got home from school, and right when I opened the door, my mom said, this is the day you almost died. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she's like, you almost died when you were two years old. I'm like, what do you mean I almost died? I was like in shock. And so she sat down with me and she told me the whole story. She said, when I was about two years old, I was supposed to do this garage sale thing. And I think I passed out in the middle of it or something is what my mom said and she thought I was sleeping but then I'm pretty sure that I started getting really pale so she started getting worried and then she called the ambulance and that's when I was taken to the hospital at the hospital the doctors drew my blood while I was unconscious and they didn't numb me or anything. They were like drawing my blood. They tried tickling me. They tried a lot of different tactics to try and like wake me up. I think they even like performed like surgery on me because they were trying to figure out what was wrong. I really don't remember. I was two years old at the time. I don't remember any of this. But anything that they tried, I just would not wake up. So at that moment, my mom was like, really worried and the doctors were really worried so I sat in the hospital I think for that night well not even like the whole night it was mid-afternoon I'm pretty sure and the doctors said that my blood sugar was really low and my pulse was also really low they said they're gonna have to take me to the PICU or the ice it was yeah the PCIU P PC PC, what is it called? P C P I C U. Okay, there we go, guys. I got it. Um, basically, what that is, it's for kids in critical condition and kids that like won't survive. So it's like I don't know. Um, you guys probably know it better than I know it, but it's a more intense hospital for people who are like on their deathbed and stuff so i was rushed over to the picu <laughs> i can't even say it picu there we go which um then oh my goodness gracious sorry guys uh ignore the camera fixing Bruh. okay we're back guys let's not look at the mess all right but I was just over to the PICU for kids. And when my mom, like, t well, when I was there, the doctors also didn't know what's wrong. The other doctors told them about, like, these, like, what they think it is. But they don't know what it is. So the doctors actually had no clue what was going on. And they just decided to, like, keep me there and stuff. And then later in the night, they told my mom, like, I was clinically dead. Um, it was like I was in a coma or on, like, actually dead, but I was breathing and I was able, like, I had, I sound, seemed fine besides my sugar and my pulse. But then later that night, the doctors realized that my blood sugar was dangerously low like dangerously low and they told my mom I think my pulse was also super super low don't really remember but 
It was one of those things. Um, and they told my mom that I was not going to make it through the night, or they at least don't think I'm going to make it through the night unless something miraculously happened. At that moment that they said, like, I wasn't going to make it through the night, my mom got down on her knees in front of everyone in the hospital. I think she went out in the waiting room to do it, but she got down on her knees and she started praying to God. She said, please don't take my baby away from me. Um, that's like one thing that she said. I forget what else, but she was in tears, crying, praying, and she didn't care what anyone like thought of her because she just knew at the moment that that's all she could do right now was pray. And after her prayer, I suddenly woke up as if nothing happened. My mom was in shock and the doctors were like speechless. But the first, I think the first thing that I said, my mom said was like, where's my, like, where am I? Or where's my mom? <laughs> Don't remember it again. But the doctors wanted me to like stay there and run a few tests to make sure I was okay. And I was like completely fine. I was running down the hallways at two years old. I was acting completely fine as if nothing happened in all my blood my blood sugar and my pulse were like normal it was just a miracle and so the doctors told my mom that that's never happened before we really thought she was not gonna make it um and they called me a miracle baby for just that experience in general they said they've never experienced anything like that before and to this day we still don't know what that diagnosis is but all I know is that God saved my life, and my mom knows it too. So I experienced God saving my life and healing me in a time where I was going to die. And he can, like, give you guys that experience too, but I don't even know. You never know when he'd give it to you. But everyone in their life is going to experience God and going to, like, have that feeling of he's real. And that's, like, when it hit me that, like, God's real. At 12 years old, my mom told me this whole story, and I'm like, I can't believe that. <laughs> but it was all real. She wasn't even joking me. And so I was called a miracle baby for my whole life. And every time on July 26, my mom, like, says, this is the day you almost died. And I'm like, yep, thanks for the memory, Mom. <laughs> but, no. That's when I really started to open my Bible and focus on my relationship with God more and Christ more. And I started going to church more. I go, like, twice a week now. Um, I haven't been able to go twice a week this time or, like, last week. But I do try to go twice a week now. And, like, going to church after hearing that story... It made me feel like new and it made me experience and just feel God in my life more which again he can come into your guys' lives at any moment if you just let him and apparently I let him as two years old well my mom did yeah <laughs> sorry but that's how I really got into my relationship with Christ more and I started reading my Bible and doing all that stuff more for Christmas I think on that year I asked for a Bible for Christmas, Bible highlighters, Bible note cards, study cards, um, Bible pens that don't bleed through, and yeah, that was legit my Christmas list. I didn't ask for anything else at my dad's house besides like those four things, and I got all of them, and I was overjoyed, and I spend a lot of time like doing my Bible and stuff now ever since that incident, but I always like knew god was real and everything when i was younger i believed in him i read a kid's bible all the time but my mom like reminded me of that story it just makes me believe in him and even more especially since like we've had experiences with him and we've had experiences with my mom's best friend like looking down on us and sending us signs and so i'm like forever grateful that Jesus or Jesus and God I guess both saved my life because I would not be here right now doing what I do 
doing YouTube for you guys if I didn't make it. So I'm forever grateful because I know there was more for me out there in the world than dying at two years old. So I'm just forever grateful for this story and I'm glad I finally got to share it with you guys. If you guys want to see a picture of me in the PCI, <laughs> can't even say guys, PICU, I will post a picture in, actually I'll just put it like right here, somewhere over here, you'll see the picture, um, it's, yeah, so that's my story, and I hope like you guys can share your stories, and if you've ever like experienced God, let me know in the comments.